Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session on lockdown exams and biochemistry by Dr. Sucheta Dandeka. Here, you can look forward to some quick study tips and guidance on preparing for your biochemistry exam. I am Priyanka Jain from the marketing team of Elzevia, and together with my colleague Kritika, we will be moderating this session today. Uh, but before we introduce our speaker and start the session, I would like to quickly lay out a few rules for you so that we all can maintain the decorum here. First, uh, as you all can see, uh, you have been kept on mute automatically. So if there is any concern or if you want to ask any question, then please write it in the Q&A tab that is seen in the bottom panel of your screen. Please, please refrain from writing anything in the chat box as it might not be acknowledged. So I repeat, just post your questions and any query that you have only in the Q&A tab. Uh, we have a team here that will try to address all your concerns and queries during the session. And if your questions are related to the topic or the ongoing, ongoing session, then Dr. Dandekar will answer them during the Q&A session that will be after the end of her presentation. Also, uh, there will be a few polling questions in between the session uh, since the participation is anonymous. So please feel free to submit your answer and give us your views. With this, uh, I would like to hand it over to Kritika to take it ahead and introduce our esteemed speaker. Over to you, Kritika. Uh, okay, so there might be some glitch. Let me take it. Uh, let me take up the introduction. So, Dr. Sucheta Danjikar, uh, she is the form. She is formerly the professor and head of the department of biochemistry at Sait GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai. She is presently the professor of biochemistry at Eras Lucknow Medical College, Lucknow. She is also an adjunct faculty at Manimal, uh, Manipal Academy of Health Education. A prolific writer, she has to her credit a number of books and publications in national and international journals. Dr. Dandikar is an active member of the GSMC Pimer and PSG Pimer Regional Institutes. Dr. Dandikar is a recipient of awards and orations, one of which is the Best Teacher Award by the Maha uh, Maharashtra University of Health Sciences. She has presented her research work at a number of national and international conferences. A Pimer Philadelphia 2010 Fellow, she was awarded the International Fellowship in Medical Education and received the Master's in Health Profession, uh, profession Education at Kiel University, UK. I now hand it over to you, Dr. Sucheta Dandikar. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for being with us today. Uh, thanks to Elsevier and their team, uh, Priyanka and Kritika, and of course, the rest of the background people who've uh, helped us make this happen. Uh, a special thank you to my co-author, Dr. Abbas Ali Mehdi, uh, who is a very close friend of mine and uh, we share our uh, likes in of writing uh, together uh, so abbas a thank you to you too uh, so here we are going to talk about uh, you know what all is happening around us and we hope that you will be able to understand this turmoil discuss the various types of questions that can be asked in the exam and I hope that you will be able to plan a strategy for successful study when all when this webinar is over. <clears throat> so during the lockdown, there are a number of things that must have happened to you. So Priyanka, can we have the first poll, please? Uh, yes, so participants here, I'm flashing the first polling question to you. As I said, the participation is anonymous. So feel free to give your res uh, response to this question. It will be there on your screen now. You have 30 seconds to vote. So it says during lockdown, you returned to your home and you faced no books, no laptops, poor net connectivity. Five more seconds for you to answer. So, 
uh, we have the responses. Dr. Dandegar, I will share the results yes. now. Yes. So can you see the result? So, oh my God, look at that. 63%. Of course, when you left your rooms, you must have taken your laptops home. But 63% went without their books because they thought perhaps they will go back to the hostel in some time. So that is the situation and uh, that all of uh, us have been in. Uh, can we have the next poll please, uh, Priyanka? Yes, so uh, participant, there will be the second question on your screen in a few seconds. 30, 30 seconds now for you to answer. During the lockdown, you felt happy, you felt sad and lonely, you missed your friends, you were happy to be with the family, and you did not get enough ex physical exercise. What all did you go through? And what all are you going through? So uh, we will end the poll here. And the result is here, Dr. Dandika. Yes. So though you missed your family, you were uh, sad and lonely, uh, <clears throat> no one was happy about it. See, only 7%, obviously. You did not get enough physical exercise, but 43% were happy to be with the family. That means uh, I'm so glad that in this situation, all of you tried to look at the positive in what was happening anyway. You know, whatever was negative, you all wanted to be optimistic about things. And you felt that, okay, at least this has given me a chance to be with my family. And why not make the most of it? So I'm so glad for that. Now, moving on to really what we, are, what we are going to do as far as the exams are concerned. Have you seen this site? Have you seen this Medical Council of India site? There is an, another poll that is going to come up, which will just may, I, I want you to just answer yes or no. <clears throat> Have you seen this slide, site? We'll keep it for 20 this more seconds. This is the site where your uh, curriculum is there. You know, your undergraduate curriculum is there. Five more seconds. And uh, here we have the result. Quite a few of you have not seen this site. Yeah, 72% haven't seen. Yes, but uh, there's nothing wrong in that because maybe, uh, uh, yeah, Pranka, we can close this. Thank you. Thank you for answering the polls. Uh, <clears throat> you will see that the MCI has put all these documents on the site. And uh, as you all did the foundation course, as you uh, work through the ATCOM model, uh, module, all of you at one time or the other were taught by your teachers all this. So it's not that you missed out just because you didn't see this site, you did not, you know, you missed out on something. No, it's definitely not that. However, so, so this webinar is to let you know what all ha ha is on those sites and what is of prime importance for you to understand. Uh, in the beginning, when we uh, started the foundation course, uh, we uh, exposed you to this attitude, ethics, and communications module. And I'm sure you, you know, there were a lot of low role plays. There were so many things that people taught you and uh, <clears throat> interacted with you. So that it, it sort of began or it was literally a foundation to your whole journey uh, to become a doctor. And uh, when it comes to becoming a doctor, uh, there were uh, five attributes that, uh, you know, uh, competencies that uh, were laid out. And they were to be a clinician, to be a leader, to be a good communicator, to be a lifelong learner, and to be a professional. So all these parts of that, of that competency were 
were integrated and people were uh, telling you about it in the foundation course. <clears throat> so in this module for first year professional course, the ATCOM module had five uh, subdivisions to it. The first professional has five subdivisions to it. It is all there uploaded in that ATCOM module that is there, which I showed you on that site. You may have a look at it again. But what they have, what the MCI has said is that 1.1, what does it mean to be a doctor? This also was taught to you all. What does it mean to be a patient? The doctor-patient relationship was uh, enacted with in front of you. Then there was this foundations of communications and there was, which I'm sure the anatomy department uh, did this with you all. And they so talked about the cadaver as our first teacher. That said and done. So these were the five aspects or criteria that were talked to uh, in, during the foundation course. So along with that, what the MCI has said is, and just told the university, uh, it is not absolutely binding, but it is preferable that in your final exam, a short answer question is asked on what does it mean to be a patient? So this kind of a question could be asked either by physiology, anatomy, or biochemistry. Anywhere, and in, in one of the two papers that are there, there can be a short answer question it, most of the time for four marks on one of these issues. Short answer questions in the summative. What does summative mean? It is your final exam. And when I refer to uh, formative, I will, it will mean that it is the internal assessments that you're having, you know, the terminal exams, etc. So in your final exams, rights of a patient, responsibilities of patients, duties of doctors and boundaries of the doctor patient relationship all these short questions are likely to be asked that means at least one question will be asked in either of your two papers either in biochemistry physiology or anatomy or in biochemistry definitely in one of the two papers one of these short answer questions could be asked because that is what the mci says in its document of assessment then there was early clinical exposure. What we did was we broke you down into smaller groups and we took you either to the ward or to the laboratory and we showed you the biochemistry laboratory to say, to show you how the reports are done, etc. But before that, a case was discussed with you and that case was then taken forward. So you either had a paper case or you had a clinical case where the medicine department or any other pathology department or any other department came up forward and they talked with the biochemistry, they aligned with biochemistry department and uh, the medicine residents in the wards showed you some patients. Because of this lockdown, because of these problems that we were facing, it is likely that that sector, sec, sectum, uh, uh, you know, segment, which uh, where you were going to be taken to the wards has still not happened. So it's likely when you go back to colleges, it may happen. Or when, if you are not called back to the colleges and you have online exams, then you will be given paper cases. So because this is what the annexure in the MCI document on assessment says. It says that there will be uh, uh, the, the number of tests will be three, one on community medicine and ECE assessment will be given subject wise. There will be one short answer question on the ATCOM and three tests in preclinical subjects should be preliminary or one of the three tests should be prelim or pre-university. So this is how the whole thing has been laid out. So you could be asked a question on early, expo early clinical exposure, either in the internal assessment, that means in the terminals, or it could be in the finals in the form of an applied question in an SAQ. So I'm just giving you this one example of a uh, ECE question and early clinical exposure on say, 
uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but let's read this together. Uh, Shanta, a 75-year-old vegetarian lady, complained to her daughter-in-law that she was experiencing occasional discomfort after meals. And what does this meal consist of? This meal consisted of curd and rice and milk sweets. She's an old lady, doesn't have, uh, maybe has a dentition problem, so she would like to have her rice all soft and she would like to just gulp it down. And then uh, this pain reaches a peak after an hour uh, post meal and it uh, also occurred after having a glass of milk just before going to sleep. Shanta spent much of that night in pain. She had abdominal cramps, flatulence and diarrhea. The daughter-in-law took Shanta to a general practitioner. All right, so, so far so good. You have the case. Now, you could be asked, what I've put in red is they could either, the examiner could either tell you what the clinical manifestation is or they could ask you what is likely the cause of this manifestation. So there are two things. Your paper, if it has a choice, that is my advice to you, and you do not know what this is, and you have a choice in your question paper, you do not answer this question. The reason why I'm saying this is, if you are completely foxed by what, it, what the clinical manifestation is, then all the other questions are going to be related to that question, all right? So you may get it all wrong. But if you still have an inkling as to what, why you have this bloating and flatulence and what could be treated, I mean, by just common sense, you can say that what are the treatment modalities means you will say that stop the milk. You may not know what is wrong, but you may just use your common sense. And suppose the other questions that are there in your paper are equally difficult or you feel that, oh, I cannot answer the others also equally well, then this is a chance that you can take because each question will have invariably one mark. Okay, so that is how you will have to make a choice and decide whether you want to take this on or not. But in an event that your question paper has absolutely no choices, then you have no way in which you can uh, not do this, not answer this, all right? So then you have to think that what is this? Why is this uh, case and why are people harping on milk? So there has to be some kind of a milk intolerance, all right? So even if you say milk tolerance and then go in to think, what, what is the constituent of milk? What is milk? Right from 10th standard and even before that in the 12th standard, you know that milk contains casein. It also contains lactose. So somewhere you have to have an open mind and start thinking that, okay, maybe this is a case of lactose intolerance. Whether you remember, you don't know what, looking at that case, you will need to know. One word of caution here, because you are first year rights and we are just exposing you to what is normal, no, no differential diagnosis will be expected of you. Later on, as you go on to the different years, you will find that you will have a little more to do and you will, you will have the, uh, the stomach cramps will not be just due to lactose intolerance. It could be due to so many other things also. So that is when you will be taught how to rule out lactose intolerance all right so this is one thing that you have to remember what we are doing is slowly building you up towards becoming a Indian medical graduate and this is your first step where most of the cases that will be given to you will be very clear cut and specific so this is now a very clear cut specific uh, uh, case of lactose intolerance. So what is the next question? So you will say lactose, which are the different situations where this condition can be seen? So one is in the old age where uh, the, uh, which enzyme, I'm not gonna tell you the enzyme. Now you have to think on your own and write down. I, I would prefer if you can have a book and a pen uh, in front of you. So as I say things, you can just make a note 
and uh, if we have the time we can maybe discuss later on but you should know which is the enzyme that could be absent in lactose intolerance and which are the different situations where this condition is seen it could be even in the small child in the infants where the particular enzyme that is hydrolyzing the lactose is not present or is 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 being produced by that infant in less amounts and then when you are told this the complaint about all this you will have to when you answer give the reason for bloating give the reason for flatulence give the reason for abdominal cramps and give the reason for diarrhea all right there could be a question which will just stop at this sorry which will just stop at state the biochemical reasons for uh, shanta's complaints it could just be that much all right then you have to go back to the case and search for the bio the reasons for the complaints what are the complaints that she is having she is having discomfort she is having abdominal cramps flatulence and diarrhea okay and th that discomfort is bloating the occasional discomfort you know the stomach feeling very uh, full so if the question gives you the reason this all these points you are very lucky it is possible that the the examiner need not give you the these reasons the examiner will just say state the biochemical reasons for uh, the shanta's complaint so first you have to find out the complaints once you list down the complaints then you will write down the reasons then elaborate on the test that can be used and the treatment modalities treatment is uh, common sense stop stop milk but give them uh, give the daughter in law an alternative to milk tell her she can they can use soya milk tell her that you they can use uh, so many other uh, protein rich diet tell her that they can use uh, uh, you know uh, uh, thuli or some other uh, substance so that the the mother in law feels full all right so you will elaborate on the tests also the hydrogen breath test etc how will you counsel shanta and her mother in law and her daughter in law you will tell shanta because see for, for a vegetarian lady who knows no, no non veg it is she will sink she will say i know only milk and nothing else what else can i do like i you know i get feeling of happiness when i drink this small cup of milk and now you're telling me and i'm as it is 75 now you're telling me not to do this so you have to remember not only your knowledge skills but your psychomotor skills that means what are the tests that you will be using but you will also have to look at your attitude you will also have to show that you will be able to counsel shanta and tell her that look all is not lost you can have so many other foods you will have to tell the daughter in law that you will have to keep the milk sweets away from her hide them from her for some time because otherwise in the middle of the night she's likely to go searching for them yeah so this is how you will counsel so this is the whole uh, details about how your a case on early clinical exposure can be asked in your final exams or in your terminal as far as ece is concerned then we have the assessment all right we have an assessment module and this says the assessment module says that in the subjects that have two papers biochemistry has two papers the learner must secure at least 40% marks in each paper with a minimum of 50% of marks in aggregate to pass in the said subject all right so this is how the, the whole thing goes this is a part of that assessment module all right what is it saying the internal assessment will be 50% combined in theory and practical but not less than 40% in each for eligibility to get your uh, uh, that uh, the pass to appear for the university exam internal assessments are not to be added to the university examinations and should be shown as a separate grade and university exams it is mandatory you get 50% marks in theory and practical earlier what we used to do are including the viva okay viva me it is not going to be clubbed with the theory theory is only theory papers keep please keep this in mind so you will have two papers of 200 marks and 100 marks okay 
So that is the situation, 100, 100 marks each, all right? So this is the situation as far as the final exams are concerned. So this summative exam will be a combination of many types of questions. This you must have already seen during, uh, during your internal assessment that has been going on so far. Those of you who missed the internal assessment, we had them online, all right? So that was a, 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 slip, a snapshot of what is going to, what the whole paper is going to be all about. So you would have structured essays, there would be short answer questions, and there would be the MCQs. So each university is going to decide how they are going to divide this. All right, there could be two sections, section A, section B, and each section can be divided. So that is now up to you to find out from the university, find out from your college, what is your paper pattern? All right, it is already decided by your university. So go ahead and find that out. Now I am going to discuss this one long answer question that is there. Uh, there are many that I've put up, but maybe we can take up one or two. And uh, I'm not sure about it, whether we will have, we will have time, I think, because I want to spend some time talking to you all and, you know, answering your questions. So let's just take these first two questions, if you want. Um, we would say, describe any one major blood buffer system in the body and its role in maintaining acid-base balance. Mind you, the long answer question will invariably be either eight marks or 10 marks, but most of the time it will be 10 marks, all right? So this is the way the, the marking will be divided. The four marks will be for the major uh, buffer and its role in uh, maintaining acid-base balance, four plus three. So it will be seven marks and then three marks for elaborate on the anion gap and its clinical significance. So irrespective of whether they give you this mark uh, division or not, when you look at a particular question that is asked, you should think in your mind, oh yes, let me think. And this is how it will be divided. So even if you don't know anything on the anion gap, please write something of sense. Huh? Don't read, write rubbish. But you need to know that also, because otherwise you will get your marks will be actually then only seven out of 10. You understand because three marks, you, because if you miss out anything, it, you will lose those marks. I used to have a student who used to be absolutely brilliant and picture perfect answers he used to give. And, uh, but he used to be so, uh, such a perfectionist that he always missed completing his paper. You know, so that one part of a quest of a paper, maybe 10 marks, maybe five marks, he missed out. So he never talked. He never talked the class. Why? Because he missed out whole chunks of the question paper that were there. Though whatever he answered, he was getting nearly full marks. You understand? So it is your call as to how you're going to divide the uh, answering that you do. Look at this. Describe the metabolism of ketone bodies. Add a note on the significance of their presence in diabetic ketoacidosis. Describe the metabolism. So that means it will be anabolism and catabolism. So you will talk about formation and breakdown of ketone bodies. And then you will go on to talk about the, write about the diabetic ketoacidosis. So so here you will have to give the clinical significance of what is happening. It is not very important for you to tell or to write down each and every uh, pathway that is there, but you need to understand the whole essence of that whole of ketone body formation. Classify the different kinds of uh, jaundice and critique the use of biochemical tests for confirmation. So this is a straight away five marks and five marks. And uh, I'm just giving you a small part from the book, which were, which are the tests that you will use? So, so here we have a table that is given to you, you know, and it can have just, you, you will talk about the biochemical test that will be there. And, and if you are able to just recollect or, or understand or learn up this one table, it will be able to help you to formulate a whole 10 mark question. So this is how things will help you and people will help you to work on it. Okay, And the differential diagnosis of jaundice can be made. 
So this is as far as the long answer questions are concerned. You could be asked a question on renal function tests. So again, write a detailed note of renal function tests. You have all the tests, the glomerular function tests and the tubular function tests. And then, of course, there would be the uh, clearance tests, which you would have to write in greater detail. So this is, again, an example of a 10 mark question. In an SAQ, you could be asked to describe the genetic code and its characteristics, explain the wobble hypothesis. This would be for four marks. So two marks for the genetic code and its characteristics, two marks for the wobble. In this wobble hypothesis, you must say how the body safeguards against mutation. Don't forget to mention that. When you're asked something about the importance of protein folding, you write down the importance of protein folding, mention the chaperones, don't forget to mention the chaperones because they play an important role in this whole folding story and justify the disease manifestations due to defects in folding. Think of the diseases and since this is only for two marks, I know that there are about four or five, I can think of Alzheimer's, I can think of cystic fibrosis, I can think of Huntington's, I can think of Gaucher's, I can think of Parkinsonism. So out of all these, even if you enlist all these, mention two in greater detail. All right. So that is where you will get your four, how you will get your four marks. Differential between uh, substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative. Two marks for substrate, two marks for oxidative. And you have to talk about the energy and talk about how the body is able to produce energy at different levels so that uh, if anything goes wrong in the system, there is at least something that is working well and working towards it. Now, there is one question, one example that I want to give you here, which is, you know, uh, this is a type of question that could be asked for 10 marks, it could be asked for 4 marks, it could be asked as a clinical case, whatever. So now look at this. Enzymes are important, uh, play important roles in the detection of acute myocardial infarction. Explain this statement with suitable examples. So you could be asked this so that you will then pick on only the enzymes and the, uh, not the other biomarkers. You could be asked Name the other biomarkers as well. Then you will have to give the, the others as well in the form of myoglobin, troponin, etc. So if you have this kind of a thing, you could, you, they could ask you to enumerate. They could ask you to interpret uh, a particular uh, situation when a clinical case is given. They could ask you to choose a test. They could ask you to construct uh, at what level you will ask for which parameter at when after the myocardial infarction and at what level will the uh, these biomarkers rise during the day or after the myocardial infarction or they may ask you to decide on a pattern so and here what will be involved enzymatic and non enzymatic markers for myocardial infarction will be uh, involved so this is how you will be able to depending on the verb that is used in that exam in the in the question you will then decide what is and how much and the marks allotment you will decide how much to write just because you know all this on myocardial infarction and the biomarkers enzymatic and non-enzymatic biomarkers do see that you time the paper See that you see you do not spend so much time over it that ultimately you lose out on answering a whole big long question and you lose out on the 10 marks straight off. So instead of being marked on 100, you will be marked on 90 straight away. All right. So caution. You have to use caution here and you have to remember that you have to keep looking at the time just as I'm doing now because I don't want Kritika to say, that, look, ma'am, uh, you overstepped and you're not able to tell the students enough or whatever you are, have planned to do. All right. So it's a good idea to keep looking at your watch and seeing whether you are able to, and, but not get stressed about it. All right. So this is one example. You could have uh, be asked and a short answer question as far as the applied aspects are concerned. Now, one example is this. Some soldiers were stationed in malaria uh, infested areas and were regularly treated for, uh, with uh, primaquine as a prophylactic measure. 
two of these treated soldiers started suffering from hemolytic anemia. These soldiers on diagnosis were uh, found to be uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficient. All right. So what is this case saying? It is giving you the uh, application. It is telling you what is wrong. So you are safe. Thank God you know what it is. All right. Then they may ask you, what, are, what does G6PD do? All right. Give reasons for the manifestations for hemolytic anemia. Which drugs, other drugs can cause hemolytic anemia in a G6PD deficient person? Why are G6PD deficient individuals resistant to malaria? These are some of the questions that can be asked. In fact, you could be even asked so many things related to the uh, reducing equivalents that are there, where what are the types of mutants? How many, um, which are, uh, to which uh, drugs are, are the patients uh, susceptible to? So the three A's you have to remember, aspirin, antimalarials, and antibiotics, the three A's. So there are so many aspects that you need to look into. And why will these patients be uh, are less likely to contract malaria? So all these are aspects that could be asked along with, they could ask you glutathione. What is the use of glutathione? What is glutathione? So anything can be asked as far as these, th these uh, aspects of G6PD deficiency are concerned. You need to re remember that this is a sum total of so many things happening. There is the oxidative stress. There is the uh, anti, uh, the, uh, all, all the free radicals that will be acting on them. And it will act on the membrane. And the membrane will rupture, leading to hemolytic anemia. So there are many aspects that need to be looked at. So what are the precautions that you will take? Also, you need to, maybe you could be asked. All right. So that's one, one example of an applied question. The second applied question I have taken here is, uh, take this for instance. A 10-year diabetic boy uh, took his uh, insulin injection in the morning and went to school. He skipped his lunch during the school break and continued to play. The boy fainted on the playground. On recovering, he had blurred vision and was slurring and there was slurring of speech. He was immediately hospitalized and his mother was called. His mother said that they have a family history of diabetes. Now the fact that he had had his insulin shot, it means that he was a ju juvenile diabetic. So this is very obvious. Name the diagnostic test that you would uh, carry out. You could, you could carry out, uh, of course, you would do an, a glucose test. You would do an insulin test, maybe. You could do a C-peptide. You could look out for ketone bodies. You could look out for beta-hydroxybutyrate. You, uh, and to, if conditions are really, really bad, there could be, uh, because of the hormonal imbalance, they, you could give an intramuscular uh, injection of um, glucagon. And what are the tests? What, what all is happening? And remember that you have to tell the normal blood, the sugar uh, level. And if the sugar then went on to less than 70 milligrams per dl, it is likely at, at about 30 that this boy could have gone into coma. So the school did the right thing of hospitalizing him earlier. So um, whatever said and done, uh, whether they told the mother or not, here, you know, this ethical issue uh, may play an, you know, may sort of tr trouble you, haunt you, and you are, you don't know whether as a principal, whether you want what you should be doing. But that time, if you are asked a question which is related to ethics, you will have to say that at that particular time to save the child, we took him to the hospital and to the put him in an ambulance. All right. So these are varied picture, pictures and varied scenarios that all of you have to think while answering your question. Now you have to start thinking like a doctor in the emergency, in the ward. And what is it that you're going to do? And this is the very beginning for all of you, my dear students. And this is what you will do. Now we come on to the MCQs, the last part of 
you know, uh, some of the things that you have to do. So which of the, you know, you could have just simple, simple, uh, see, most of us don't want you to fail. We would love you to get through and to go on ahead in life. So there will be out of say 20 questions, MCQs that are asked, at least 50% of the questions will be so that we help you to pass, all right? So most of them are in our language, what we call recall type of questions, where you have mugged up something and you will be able to answer it, all right? So which of the following is abundantly found in collagen? You just have to know the answer, all right? In the case of allosteric enzymes, which is what is the graphical representation when the initial velocity is plotted against the substrate concentration? You could be asked, all right? So sigmoidal curve. You, you, and you can you know, use a lot of trial and error in this kind of a thing. You, you think of serine and you feel that no. You look at uh, uh, alanine and you look at tryptophan and then you say, I think, I think it is possible it is uh, glycine, you know? Uh, the, the book also has a number, num, num, this Elsevier book, which, you know, which, which Elsevier has published. We have a number of multiple choice questions for practice that are given, uh, which, you know, and, and the answers are also given. So you're not really wondering whether oh, you got it right or not. So you could use them as practice. There could be an applied type of question, MCQ, where you could be asked that when blood sugar falls, glycolysis is stopped in the liver, and which process starts? You have to use your common sense, and you have to realize that sugar, that when blood sugar falls, you need to make glucose. Is anaerobic glycolysis making glucose? No, it's breaking down glucose. Is glycogen synthesis uh, making glucose? No, it is going to make glycogen. Is it, is um, citric acid cycle, what is it doing? It's breaking down the acetyl coenzyme A to carbon dioxide in water. So what is it that is actually making the glucose to help you to replenish this blood sugar level? It is gluconeogenesis. So that is how you, uh, each and every, uh, we call these distractors and we call this the, the, the answer or the item. Uh, this, we call this the item and this is the key. So we, we, we decide, we, you can decide what it is that you need to answer. You could be asked, given a case that a 60 year old man is brought to the emergency nearly six hours after he complains of chest pain. He shows an elevation of LDH and CPK and the patient is likely to have bone disease, nephrotic syndrome, severe infection or myocardial infarction. So there could be just a simple thing. I mean, this is not rocket science. This I'm sure anyone will be able to answer. But I'm just giving you examples of where you could have complicated MCQs. You could have very simple MCQs. You could have a case-based MCQ. All right. So this is what you need to hone your skills about. The book also has small aspects of, you know, um, like points to ponder where uh, small uh, tidbits are given to you which talk about, you know, say this coenzyme is often derived from a vitamin and is loosely bound to an enzyme. Uh, inheritable genetic disorder, some enzymes are either deficient or absent in the tissues. So you need, you know, just fun reading. Nothing that will maybe, you know, be actually asked as far as exam goes, but just to a little bit of fun reading. So uh, we have now, so I have now more or less finished with what I wanted to tell you as far as all these uh, exam pattern and exam questions are concerned. What I want you to do is now uh, spend just a, mi a minute just thinking of what all you want to ask me. Put it in the Q&A box that uh, Priyanka and uh, Kritika have told you about. Out, uh, because we have now, I think, uh, about 15 to 20 minutes left. I and but I would like to give you a sermon. I would like to, I mean, as you do that and as you think of the exam, so I want to just stop and I want you to now think of the exam. Then let us think of the lockdown again once more. Okay, so is that okay, Priyanka? If I give them a minute to think of the questions, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. So, Priyank, uh, so uh, uh, my friends, why don't you all just think of what you want to ask me, ask us? Uh, we will try and answer them to the best of our ability. 
uh, wherever I'm not able to answer, I'll be very frank and tell you, look, this is beyond me and I don't think I can do it. All right. But somewhere down the line, we will connect and we will give you the answer. I don't want to give you some wrong responses. All right. So I will now just stop talking for a minute. Participants, please post your questions only in the Q&A tab. It is there in the bottom panel of your screen. Thank you. Ma'am, we have uh, received quite a few questions uh, by now. Should we start the Q and A, or do you want no, to no, add any more slides? I'll just, uh, uh, you know, f finish by uh, telling them how to go about studying this. Anyway, that yeah, is yeah. what I was noticing. Yeah. They have asked quite a, quite a few of you have asked. Um, also, the paper pattern can be okay. We'll take the questions a little later. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> see. The first thing that you need to do when you're home, irrespective of whether you have a book or not, all right, uh, you could get a, now, now you could maybe, you know, if, if you have, if you think that they are not going to call you back to your colleges and you'll not be able to get your books, then at least one, one book you need to ask for, you know, or to get, uh, uh, I think uh, Amazon Prime is uh, allowing uh, Elsevier to post the books, right? Uh, am I right, uh, Priyanka? Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's possible that, you know, you could, uh, you know, ask for one book, at least in, the, in uh, physiology, one book in biochemistry and one book in uh, uh, anatomy. All right. And in your home, you must create a special space for study. However small the home may be, you know, you need to take that one small uh, uh, table and chair or, uh, for yourself, all right? It may be your dining table, it may be anything. It may be a, 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 a part in the passage of your home, all right? But that should be your study space. Keep that as your study space. Avoid getting bored. When you make a timetable that I'm going to talk about, uh, see that you mix the subjects. Don't just do all of biochemistry in one day. It is very boring. Don't just do anatomy on one day. See that you do part anatomy, part biochemistry that way. And take a break. That is why when I was talking to you, we allowed you to take a one minute break at least, you know, so that you'll also uh, recover from what all I've been saying. Okay, make a timeline. Keep a separate notebook for points. As you study, have a notebook. Even as I was, you know, talking to you all, I had this notebook in my hand. And as I thought of whatever, you know, I, I kept writing down that, oh, this is what you may think. Or, you know, something came to my mind and I felt, oh, maybe I should talk to you this also. So I put that down on my, on my notebook. All right. 
that's a good habit. Um, nothing uh, is better than you know using a, a paper and pen. Write, draw as you are, as you study. Do not lose this practice. Otherwise, you will be on the laptop all the time. Your fingers will move like this, and then your hands will not move to write the question paper. That is very difficult. And when I'm telling you about writing and drawing, there are some of you in, in the Q&A have, have said, can just a flow sheet do? See, right now as a competency-based uh, program, there is no need for you to know everything in great detail, all right, the, the reactions and all. The salient features of everything you should know. And that is the reason why I showed you uh, that answer in the book uh, related to HMP Shanti must have noticed that, you know, just the salient features are mentioned and maybe the flow sheet. So you, it is your call. If it is a 15 mark question that some of you are saying that you have two 15 mark questions, that is okay. Whatever is asked, you just have to split it up and see that you answer whatever is asked in those 15 marks that you have to answer properly and split it. Talk and discuss with your friends and mentors. I'm sure you have your phone numbers of some teacher. Let them. Don't get carried away by rumors. Don't get carried away by the fact that someone will say, Aray, to sab cancel hone wala hai. Kuch nahi hai. Phone hoga hi nahi. Whether it, the whole exam gets cancelled or not, studying has never failed, you know. And it has, it will always go a long way in understanding your second year. So whatever anyone will say, you have to keep studying. And when you keep studying, reward yourself. Give a pat on your back. Eat that small chocolate. I won't say eat ice cream because maybe your parents also will say don't eat ice cream because they are afraid that maybe you, know, you will have a, a sore throat or something because of that. But anyway, take care of yourselves. All right. Make a timetable like this. Put the timings. Put a nap time. Uh, put, a, put a time when you will st st study. So I've put all this blank intentionally because you can talk to your friend. You can say hi to Raza. You can say, John, how are you? You can ask Ria to explain something because you did not understand. You can watch your favorite serial. You can play a video game. You can watch a movie. But don't forget to call your nani or daddy. All right. So stay in touch with the family don't get so bogged down i mean it's a good thing to just talk shop talk anything else but exam all right so these are the things that you need to look into and with that there is one final poll that we have i think priyanka right yes the last poll that will uh, flash on the screens now you just need to answer yes or no and you have 30 seconds to answer. So would you like to have a quick read guide of a book? Five more seconds. So I end the polling now. Let us see the results. 93% says yes. <laughs> I expected that. So not that, that Elsevier is trying to, you know, uh, promote this. But yes, you do have the right question and answers and you have the clinical aspects all there in the book. So you could have a look at it. But more than that, I would like to now take your questions. So Priyanka or Kritika, who is going to read out those the questions? Uh, so uh, Dr. Dandika, they, I have my uh, colleague Mehek who will read out the questions. We have over 100 questions uh, received on the Q&A panel. So uh, we won't be able to take all, but we'll try to answer one by one all of these questions. Okay, see, I can also see this. Uh, Mehek, you can tell me, but as I go through, I you know, there is a lot of sameness in the questions. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, can you just uh, weed out and have the same questions uh, answered? Uh, sure, ma'am. Give me the same, same. Yeah, tell me, Mike. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. So here is the first question, which is how can we practice clinical questions for exam? Uh, you can. There is no need for you to practice clinical question. 
once you are, have understood the whole theory behind what is happening and well, like take your take the example of the lactose intolerance test that we talked about okay uh, uh, the lactose intolerance that we talked about uh, you once you have understood the uh, the intricacies of that of lactose intolerance you can write uh, uh, anything regarding you know whatever is clinically based it will come to you so you should understand what what a particular disease is all about and that is why most of the books have now been giving you you know clinical aspects so many things on as far as clinical aspects is concerned so when you are reading a particular topic you read it thinking ki ye aise patient humko dikhai dega to kya hoga is this topic that i am reading what kind of a clinical aspect question can be asked all right so that is how you will be able to uh, practice practice on your own while reading the book itself okay next i'm the next madhumita is it, is that fine i think madhumita asked that yeah okay next yeah. yeah so next question we we did discuss about the 15 marks i think a lot of students have this uh, query that the essay yes, yes. carries 15 marks how much should they write there and how can they score maximum in that part and what are the uh, evaluators expectation from that question okay i will now go back to this uh, my long answer question see this is what i was telling you about you know uh, there are so many salient features of the hmp sham that is asked that you can just pick out from here and you uh, have the applied aspect here itself give the reasons and manifestations all right so um, many a book will have this kind of an aspect like that that is given and uh, you know our book also does have it so now look at this long answer question suppose this is now 15 marks all right for this 15 mark question when it comes to describe any blood buffer and its role uh, so instead of this i will have would have asked for 15 marks describe briefly ha huh, the blood buffer systems sorry i am bad at typing so blood buffer systems Bl briefly any three or any two depending on the examiner all right so i would give six marks here itself two two marks for each and then describe any one in detail okay so there i would give so that would be six marks i would give any one buffer uh, again four marks that is 10 or five marks and an iron gap uh, four marks all right so this is how the 15 marks will be divided and if you are not asked any three and you are asked the same thing then then rest assured the uh, the marks will also be divided like that so it's okay the same kind of question can be asked for 15 marks different kinds of jaundice also critique on the biochemical uh, test also it could be 10 plus 5 or it could be 8 plus uh, 7 all right it could be 8 plus 7 so don't worry don't worry about this at all any and what else uh, yeah moving on to our next question which is during lockdown no internal assessment was conducted will it affect the final results no it will not it will not uh, uh, affect the final results because uh, anyway your final exam is different is is on a different platform altogether and somewhere now there is a lot of uh, talk on some kind of an assessment to be taken for all of you so the colleges are already thinking about it though they may have not come up with all to all immediately but many colleges are are uh, thinking of doing it 
Uh, Ma'am, shall we take the next question then? Yeah, 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 yeah please. The university exams are near and uh, the whole syllabus needs to be covered. So what are the important topics according to you which should be emphasized on? That I'm not in a position to tell because you know you, you are all from different universities and even if I you know were to tell you for my own university it's difficult. Uh, um, most of the time if you look at the UG curriculum I don't know whether you've seen this you know I'm sure you you must have uh, you you can see this document in the uh, in on the MCI site, it says UG, UG uh, curriculum. All right, and uh, uh, each university will have blueprinted, and we will we would give you that blueprint, you know. Otherwise, that what is the emphasis? But if you look at that, each one has you know divided it into competencies. You no, know? you have the whole MCI competencies that are there, and. Uh, Moving ahead to the next yeah. question. Yeah. Which is, you, would, uh, okay. you can have a look at this and you will, uh, you will understand for yourself. The objectives that the teachers talked about when they taught you that particular question, uh, those also you can think of. And you will know, you know what weightage each topic has. All right, next. Yeah, so the next question is, do we have to study the practical book too for writing the theory paper? Because all these kind of questions are not in the textbook. All these kind of questions are there in the textbook. They're there. It's not that they're not there. Huh? And, uh, and the practical book you can read also. But then see, remember, you have to pass separately in the practicals. So the practicals also, uh, each of you, you know, while you were studying, they must have given you some parts of the, you know, or some online. Uh, or if they have not, you can contact your teachers and ask them to give your own university people to give you uh, certain um, applied questions that are there. And uh, you need to study the practical because it is a hundred mark paper that, that also. So you cannot just, you know, uh, ignore it. So 200 marks for the theory and 100 marks for the uh, practical, and both of which have to be passed separately. So, so there is no way in which you can say, we itna karenge or wo nahi karenge. All right. And all these are answerable in the book. They're all there. Next. So ma'am, with this, we have come to an end to our Q&A round because uh, these were the common questions that we got from the students. Uh, now I hand over to Priyanka to conclude the session. Uh, thank you, Mahek. Uh, no, ma'am, no, no, wait, wait, wait. One of them is saying, which is the book that you're referring to? So uh, Kritika or who is going to say? Uh, Ma'am, can you just put, uh, bring to your last slide of the presentation? I think that will answer the query. Yes, so this is the book uh, students can refer to. It's available at Amazon and the nearest store also. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, as I told earlier, there are over 120 questions uh, that we have received, but in the interest of time, uh, we will not be able to answer or uh, take up any more right now. Uh, maybe I, we will send it to you over email and then in a couple of days, you can send us the answer, which we can then send to the participants. So uh, with this, uh, I thank you, Dr. Dandeka, for such an insightful session. And we are really sure that the participants, uh, participants would be benefited with, your, uh, with what you have taught them today. And, so, and uh, you know, I would just like to say you have come this far, so don't give up now. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, don't you worry, everything is going to be just fine. This is just the beginning. And there are so many things that all of us have to face. So don't I, yes, so I think this, these were the best of the parting messages that you could give to the participants right now. Anything else you would want to say before we wrap up today? No, 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 you can wrap up, yeah. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank ma you so much. So just a note for the participants here, a recording of this, uh, this session and the certificate of participation will be shared with all of you on email in a few days. And you can also see the recording on the YouTube channel of Xavier India. 
uh, there will be many more uh, interesting webinars coming up so keep connected to us thank you once again for everyone uh, uh, for giving us your time today thanks a lot thank you everyone bye bye